Okay, welcome back champions. Today, we're gonna to be tackling percentages in QR class number five. Now, if there was ever a VIP question in QR, it would 100% be percentages. Because if there's one mathematical concept you want to be familiar with going into QR, it is percentages. Percentage change is something that is common, but we'll be exploring it a bit later in this class because it requires a very solid fundamental knowledge of percentages before we end up mastering percentages. So our goal here in the initial stage is to learn how to work with percentages as decimals, in particular, their relation to the number one. So if I asked you what 100% of the number two is, we'd be pretty comfortable in saying it's just two, just as we'd say 1.00 times the number two is equal to two. The same thing happens in these examples here, where 80% of a certain value is simply 0.8 times the value. And conversely, with a number higher than 100, 130% of a value is 1.3 times that value. Now, another very important point is learning how to interpret the question. We want to be able to figure out what exactly it is that the question is asking us to solve. And this is a meta skill, not only for percentages, not only for quantitative reasoning, but for the entirety of the UK. Far too often, I see that the, on the tail end of people's practice for QR, right before their UCATs, they're asking me, I'm still having trouble interpreting the question. And at that point, it doesn't matter how many methods you know, how many techniques you know, it doesn't matter how good you are at applying them. If you can't get past the barrier of actually interpreting the question, there is no chance in actually answering the question, okay? So it's something that we want to develop throughout our time uh, doing these questions. Lastly, and more specifically, here we want to become comfortable with the unitary method. Now, some of you may know this, some of you may not. Essentially, it's just a fancy name for something you will already know from year seven and nine math, okay? So here's a question to put it into perspective. 37% of a luxury car's value is 29,600. What is its full value? Okay. And here's my approach. What is the question actually asking me? Okay. And here we discern that this question is asking what is 100% of the value of the luxury car? Okay. Cool. Now, how do we find that 100%? First, we must find 1%. And this is where the unitary method comes in. Essentially, the unitary method is nothing but finding 1% and then working with that to find any other percentage, okay? And while this may be a step that a lot of you guys mentally omit, the truth is, even in our calculations, we always do this. So how do we go about finding 1%? Well, if 37% is 29,600, then... To find 1%, we would simply divide 29600 by 37. And that would give us our answer, 1% equaling $800. Now, to find 100%, we would simply multiply that 1% times 100 parts. So 800 times 100 would give us 80,000. So to answer the question, what is 100% of the full value? We would get $80,000. Now, the goal here is to get so quick with the unitary method that we can condense this entire thought process into one calculator step, okay? Some of you may know how to condense it into two. That's great, but one is always better than two in this case, okay? Now, a lot of you might be sitting there and asking, one step, that's mad. How do we go about doing that? Well, let me try and demonstrate this, right? So. 29,600, we divided that by 37 and then times it by 100. That's essentially all we did. Now, am I right in saying that 29,600 times 100 over 37 is the same? All I've done is move the 37 from below the 29,600 to below the 100. It is essentially the same. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't know what 100 over 37 is off the top of my head. Okay, so let's try and change this into a more, a more applicable, more workable equation. And here's where our fundamental knowledge of fractions comes in. Okay, 
I don't know about you, but I'm a lot more confident in knowing what 37 over 100 is than the other way around, okay? And all I've done here is change the, uh, the multiplication sign to the division sign here, okay? And essentially, this should give us 29600 divided by 0.37, which should give us our same answer of $80,000. So if we are... Um, if we just pull up the calculator here, let's just see how long this takes us. 29600 uh, divided by 0 0.37, $80,000. Okay, that took barely any time at all. Okay, and the truth is, questions like this do come up on the UCAT at times. Okay, so to spend less than five seconds on a question where you have an average of 40 seconds to answer, that is absolutely amazing. That's what we want to be doing. Now, we move on to percentage change. It is essentially an extension of the, um, the percentage questions that we've already done, okay? And they are also very, very, very common. There are essentially three variables that we need to work with in a percentage change situation. There is the original value, the new value, and the percentage change. These questions usually provide two variables and require you to solve the third one. Um, yeah, that's essentially it. Okay, so here I've shown you a little triangle that can help you figure out your new values, old values, and percentage change as well. But I think personally, this can get a bit tricky, okay? And relying solely on this triangle might come back to bite you if you don't have a solid, solid understanding of how percentages actually work. <coughs> Sorry. My advice is to develop a solid understanding of what these percentages actually mean. And then uh, working with these numbers is going to be so much easier. Now, personally, if there's ever a formula to memorize for QR, this one is my pick, okay? Because one, percentage change is incredibly common. And two, I've personally found this formula insanely helpful when it came to percentage change questions. Like it is foolproof, okay? So let's just have a look at how we can use this in a question. Alrighty, so here is a question that we can work with. Last year, Dennis accumulated a profit of $7,800 selling his beats to artists. This year, he managed to sell a beat, which went on to become a worldwide sensation, landing him a profit of $31,200. Wow, my bad there. <laughs> what was the percentage increase of profit from last year to this year? Okay, so if we use that new value minus old value, over old value, we get this, okay? So bringing up the calculator, 31200 minus 7800 gives us this number, and we're just gonna divide that by 7800 again, three. What does this three actually mean? It means that if we interpret this as 3.00, that there was a 300% increase in our profits, okay? So essentially, that is our answer here. The um, answer is D. But um, some of us might be thinking, well, why is it not 400%? The calculations I did with the other triangle here landed me a 400%. Well, let me try and frame it this way. When we go from 50 to 100%, what is our percentage increase? The percentage increase isn't going to be 200% is it? No. Okay. Yes, you are multiplying 50 times two, but this does not mean it's a 200% increase. If anything, we need to subtract one from there and say that this is a 100% increase. Okay. So from 50 to 100, we actually get a 100% increase. All right. And if we go from say 100 to 150, well, we know Hopefully, we can see intuitively that this would be a 50% increase, all right? But then let's actually put that into a calculator and you'll see how it works. 150 minus 50, um, sorry, 150 minus 100 is what? 50, divide that by the old value, 100.5, which 
if we interpret that is a 50% increase, okay? Cool. So then moving on to our next question here. Last year, Dennis accumulated a profit of 31,200 selling beats to his artists. So now we're in the next year. His manager predicts Dennis's profits to decrease by 45% this year due to a lack of creativity. How much profit does Dennis's manager predict Dennis to make this year? Okay, so hopefully, if we are comfortable with our percentages, we realize that there's a 45% decrease in profits. We are predicting his profits to be 50, 55% of what they were, okay? His profits this year are going to be 55% of what they were. In other words, 0.55 times 31,200. So then if we simply pull up our calculator again, calculator is your best friend in QR, 31,200, we get our answer of 17160. Our answer here is in fact C. Another one. Last year, Dennis accumulated a profit of 31,200 selling beats to artists. Dennis has just managed to strike a deal with a well-renowned artist, completely changing his manager's predictions. His manager now predicts there to be an 18% increase from last year's profit. What is an 18% increase? Okay, so how much profit does Dennis's manager predict Dennis to make this year? An 18% increase, okay? If there was no increase, what would it be? It'd be 1.00 times day one two hundred. Therefore, we can say that an 18% increase is actually 1.18 Okay, that's the 18% increase coming in, 31,200. Okay, so then again, if we plug this into a calculator, 1.18 times 31,200, easy as 36816. Our answer here is E. Last but not least, another question with Dennis. Dennis has lost his annual profit tracker. Wow. This year, he made a profit of 24,560. He forgot how much profit he made last year, but remembers that this year's profit was exactly 25% more than what he accumulated last year, okay? In other words, 24560 is equal to 125%. 24560 is equal to 1.25, and we are looking for what one equals, okay? All right, you might be asking, why the number one? Well, that's our reference point. This profit that he made last year is our reference point. And 24560 is exactly 25% more than that. So 1.25 equals 24560. We are looking to get one. Okay. And in this case, it is a simple matter of division. 24560 divided by 1.25 gives us 19648. Our answer here is A. Okay. So hopefully we kind of have a solid understanding of how percentages work through the last three questions we did here, but also percentage change here, which becomes very, very important. Question, in terms of action items that you guys can do, attempt practice QR questions, okay? Do, do a lot of them. Utilize what you have learned today, all right? Not every question is going to give you the opportunity to practice percentages, but I would say a good one in five or even two in five will, okay? The only way to get better at using these time-saving efficiency methods is to practice utilizing them. Because again, you guys saw exactly how fast I could make these happen. That is your goal as well. So keep a keen eye out for these opportunities to use the percentage formulas we have used today. And also just remember, try and save calculator steps wherever possible. For example, 37 over 100 is going to be 0.37. So instead of making it a two-step like x times 37 over 100, you could just do x times 0.37. Okay. Other than that, this has been a longer class. Well done for making it through it. And that has been percentages for quantitative reasoning.